Good morning everyone. What a beautiful day we have today. One of the few nice ones we're gonna have all week. We got this little guy. We've got lots and lots of comments on what his name should be. A couple we liked were Bear and Kong. Uh, so if you guys, we still haven't named him. He still does not officially have a name. He's brand new to the family. Little black uh, German Shepherd. But we have a little break in the weather today, so we're gonna take advantage of that. And we're gonna knock down a lot of trees. We're going to town. Boom, boom. All through there, boom. This whole yard's gonna look a lot different by the time we're done. So let's, not waste any more time, let's get into today's video. So Wes hopped in my mini. And I warned them the controls are bass backwards. Those are farmer controls, not cat controls. All he's got to do is move that out of the way. We'll see if that actually happens for him. <laughs> There's nothing worse than trying to run a machine with the controls bass backwards. <laughs> that just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my that's my log sculpting logs don't wreck it Wes okay. <laughs> okay. someday I want to have someone that does log sculpting come and work on that thing for me if any, <laughs> if any of you guys know somebody that does log sculpting, let me know. I'd love to have one. Oh, are you quitting already? <laughs> I don't want to tip the log over into your new machine. <laughs> All right. Wes, introduce yourself to these guys. I'm Wes with uh, Pro Tree. <laughs> All right. And let's go meet the team. Yeah. All right. And then we'll come back and let the old farmer run the old farmer control machine and move that log. All right, Wes, what do you do for Pro Tree? I am uh, the owner. I do kind of manage a lot of things. I do a lot of the sales work for the company. Well, you want to introduce me to your team? Yeah, they want to be introduced. This is Mariah. Hi, I'm Mariah. Nice what to What do meet you do you. for these guys? Uh, I'm an arborist. I do tree climbing. I do kind of everything. All right. So. How's and you going? are? Tyler. Tyler. How's it going? And what do you do for them? I'm the renew uh, renewable services manager. So I oversee plant health care, which we did a video on, and yep. Christmas lights. So, so yeah. he was in the video where we did the, we treated the, the, the ash trees. The ash trees. For emerald ash bar. And every ash tree that's going, that's in the cities right now is either going to be dead or it's got to be treated if it doesn't, if you don't want it dead. Is that correct? correct. Yeah, every ash tree in the Twin Cities is going to end up dying from emerald ash bar unless it's being treated and protected. Okay. And we got Tanner over here. So, if you guys don't remember Tanner, go check out how the Pro Sharp and the Tree Shot saw. How are you, Tanner? Good. And we're going to be doing another one of those videos, I believe. So, new and improved. A new and improved one. Yep.
So we're gonna be taking out one ash right there by the left. Subgreen out here. That one right there. We'll work towards the other one to the power line. Minimal approach distance. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so tell them what the mat is and explain, explain the acronym and what it means. <laughs> <laughs> this feels real natural, you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Wes, what is a mat? So what Tanner's talking about is called minimum approach distance. So it's a, it's the distance that us as arborists and specifically incidental line clearance arborists, how close we're allowed to work to those wires. Okay. So depending on the voltage of the wires, we have different mads and how close we can get to them and how close we can work around them. Oh, okay. Good so enough. Tanner will explain each individual wire and the different mads from those wires. Okay. So as we get, we have no wires this no. way. So as we go this way, yeah, what are we we'll looking at? Those more. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start on the left. I'm gonna do these two trees. Actually, I'm gonna do these three. And then Mariah's gonna be doing the ash. Cody, you're gonna be on the dingo forwarding. Mariah, I'm gonna have you do rigging and cutting. Tyler, cutting and clean up. So that's it right here. Wes is actually on the clam. Oh boy. <laughs> so stay clear of him. <laughs> so this is one where we're gonna have secondary avoid contact. Um, we do have phone lines there. Trippy too. Terrible there. Yeah. We'll have some stuff on the road too, so we might need back to check the truck out for that. This one goes. So we're doing this that ash. Mariah's gonna be doing that one. A lot of that stuff will end up in the road. We're plenty clear from all the power lines right there. So we have a single phase up top. That's the one we're most concerned about. We got to stay five feet away from there. The secondary is below it. Avoid contact. Obviously stay as far away from it as we can. We do have wires going to the house too. Avoid contact. Along with all the comm lines. What other hazards do we have? We have mailboxes. Stan's gonna move. Cool statue. What do you call that thing? Gargoyle. The cool statue. Stan's gonna move that. Yeah, we have Stan's house to look out for. Yeah. We have Stan to look out for walking <laughs> around the job site. Yeah, because I'll be everywhere trying to get a good video for you guys. Yep, today it's pretty sunny, mildly windy, fairly. Free climb, we're not climbing anything. Um, we have the left, which we'll be up in, but we do have climbers to get us down. Traffic control, we have phones out. Everyone's got PPE, there's traps sitting over there. Um, our work zone, under the drip line of all the trees. Let's watch out for pedestrians. Stan again. Um, our safe zone, that's gonna be on the deck. That's where all of our equipment is. We'll eat lunch over there. That's our safe zone. If you need to take your helmet off, you can go over there. And our closest hospital is regional. First call 911 though. Yeah. So let's take a closer look at what they're doing here real quick. Hey, can you walk me through what you're doing here real quick? Yeah, so basically he's rigging down pieces so that it's controlled. Okay. And we're not just bombing down on the arborvitaes. Okay. Um, so yeah, he's kind of just communicating to us through the comms and he's kind of just telling us how much weight and then that kind of determines uh, how much wraps for friction. Oh, so, you, so it's how much you wrap that is determined by how much weight he's estimate. Oh, okay. Yep. So there's no guesswork to this thing. You guys got her down to a science. Yeah, it's really nice we have the communication so that we can, you know, be on the same page. Okay.
is pretty sick. Man, I love watching other people work. I love how they got this stuff figured out. And then they just, they work as a team. These guys do an excellent job. They got, they call this an easy tree, this an easy tree, that one not so easy, and the one up front, really not easy.
must be hard to tie them off when they're dead, right? Yeah, definitely. Like those ash we were doing earlier yeah. with emerald ash borer, you got to be really careful rigging. There's a point when you can't even rig out of them. Right. Because they're so brittle. Yeah. And you never know what you're going to get. I've heard those those dead just, ash are just dangerous. They lose all their water, they just fall apart. Yeah. So Tanner, what's the highest tree you ever fell out of? <laughs> Only 30 feet. Okay. What was the one that knocked laid you up for a while? That was that one. That was that one. Yep. Yeah. Not a fun one. Good learning experience. What happened with it? I only had one point of tie-in. Okay. So when you're going up the tree, you need two points when you're using a chainsaw. For one cut, for one cut, I took off my my second one. My spike slipped and I nicked my rope. Oh man. That's the end of it. And then you met the ground fast. I met it very fast. How long were you in the hospital for? A week. It's a big eye opener for a lot of people in the Twin Cities that do tree work. And... How fast it goes south. Yeah. This is dangerous work. This is really dangerous work that you guys make look it pretty is. easy, you know? So we're gonna try to cut this to make it land flat. Oh. That's always the goal is to get a log to lay flat. It's okay. very difficult to judge that. Because if it lands spiked in, you never know which way it's going to do the crappy floppy, right? That, and if you're on someone's yard. If it lands flat, it doesn't leave a big impact, or else you leave a big divot. Okay. Interesting. Landing flat. Pretty flat if you ask me. Flat enough. So I'm watching Tanner. Up. This is your felling mark right here, this black line. So okay. wherever that's aimed, that's where your hinge is going to be. Okay. So that's kind of the direction I'm felling it right now. Okay, so... So you kind of stand right here before you make your cut and you get your position set. And then this is close that's, where you're going to go. And then you make your bottom cut? Yep. And then your back cut has to be flush with the bottom cut or... or flush or above. You don't want to go below. How or, much? How much above can you go? You don't want to go too high. So you want to get... A couple inches. A couple inches is safe? Yeah. Okay. You can't be that high above it. A couple inches, though. Yeah, you don't okay. want to be below it. Okay. My exhaust is falling off, so that's why it's so loud. Oh, all right. I just thought you liked the extra power. I do. <laughs>
That's how you get her to fall where you want. So what are we, why are we looking at this, Tanner? So this is your hinge right here. Yep. I left it w wider on this side because it had a lean going towards your garage. Okay. So you have more holding wood here. Okay. So it's less likely to break and go sideways. Sideways. So you wanted it to break this way and if nothing else, go that way. Correct. Okay. So that was done intentional. So you can see exactly the same on narrow and then it goes wide on this hinge wood right there. All right. showing Nikki see this hole right there all up in it. that is the emerald ash bore hole flat on the bottom and then circular on the top huh. and when you have that that means the emerald ash bores in your tree so that's dead 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 all of these are dead all the way through here and then I would say the majority of those in there are dead We'll save those for another day. Today we're just going to be pulling all the ones that are by power lines and super dangerous. Yeah. And require skill. So this one right here is one of the trickier trees just because of the proximity of that power line. So they're getting their game plan together before it goes down. Okay, so the dingo is set up over there. And the rope is set up there. So they're gonna try to get that to drop between the house and the power line.
worked out. Well, that was close. Woo, doggy! You're on the other side? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Might as well. Boy, you couldn't get that much closer, could you guys? No. It's almost like you knew what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. You had inches to spin.
wreck your blade then? I mean, it's fine. But no, it's just like, I've never seen one. Like perfect. So that's what you guys are like. Why are these guys all fascinated with a log? <laughs> See how it's buried? Yeah, it? That log's still cool. sitting over there. Oh, it's that one. Yeah, you can get a good picture. So you nailed it like dead smack yeah. on. Out of a 12 foot log, I picked the one spot with the screw. <laughs> are you guys finally done for the day? Yeah. Get to go home and rest? Yeah. yeah. You happy with everything? That is awesome. You guys did excellent work. I mean, to clean up everything, you guys. You guys always do the best. That's why I recommend you guys to Perfect. anybody and everybody. What Love is your it. website? Pro-tree.com. Or, we're changing actually. It's Pro Tree Outdoor Services. So is it Pro Tree Outdoor Services .com? Dot com. Yeah. What's the phone number these guys could reach? 612-405-8733. All right. These are my favorite tree company. I use them for everything. Absolutely outstanding work, you guys. So give them a call if you're in the twin cities metropolitan area and you want some tree work done get in line behind me and give them a call that's it for this one god bless you guys go get them